Evolution? I don't think so. Part three. In Evolution, I don't think so, which was the first message, I looked fairly briefly at the theory, the disproved theory, um, unless of course one wants to cling on to that and accept that theory as reality and fact, but the disproved theory that we, people, humans, have evolved from um, animals, some sort of primitive life form, and I contrasted the abilities which we have, the physical abilities which we have, with those of the land animals, the sea creatures, and the uh, birds of the air. In Evolution, I don't think so, part two, I looked at the what I could briefly say or describe as the, the nastiness of mankind, because that's indeed what we are. We are nasty people. We um, don't act in the way that we should do if we were the pinnacle of the, the created order. Or perhaps, no, I've made a slip there, haven't I, for the evolutionists, if we are the pinnacle of the evolved order. Biblically, of course, we are the pinnacle of God's creation. So we have not evolved from anything at all. We were created by Almighty God as people, Adam, and from Adam he created Eve, per people in perfection. Regrettably, since uh, the events of Genesis chapter 3, things all went badly wrong, separation from God, and we've ended up in the position in which we are now. But in that second message, um, I looked at the, the, the nastiness of him, of us as human beings and how if we were meant to have evolved and evolved and got better and better well really we shouldn't be acting as we do but we do don't we so this is evolution i don't think so part three and i'm going to look at now at how we as people as a human race how we want to evolve and how we want to get better and better and better and we do there's a certain element in certain people who want us to achieve more than we are able to achieve as as people, as humans. Not being satisfied with what we can do, we just want to in improve and increase in all that we do. We want to evolve. As humans, we want to evolve into something better. And there is a driving force that is quite prevalent and certainly as we've reached the 21st century uh, and we're now in the year 2022 it's becoming apparent and, and, and the knowledge of this is, is, in, is increasing amongst the general population uh, about uh, the way that certain developments are progressing. We want to do better, we want to achieve more we want to control more. But the problem with that, you see, is that the first problem I'm going to look at is that it, it, it's all about us. It's nothing about God. And, and that is a step, is it not, into what I would call, loosely call, and, and I haven't studied humanism, but I'm going to say this is a step into what I would loosely call humanism. Leaving God out of the picture. We, we want to do it ourselves. We're going down this route of what I would loosely term humanism. And problem two, which stems really from that, is a, a never-ending quest or desire or a search to go beyond the boundaries or the limits which God has set for us. Yes, God has set limits for people, for us. And the first limit or boundary we can see in, is in Genesis chapter 2 where we're looking at the Garden of Eden, Genesis, of course, being the first book of the Bible. And Genesis chapter 2 here, um, let's have a look. We've got in, in verse 8, Genesis 2 verse 8, the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground the Lord God made every tree grow that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life was also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now a river went out of Eden to water the garden. 
and from there it parted and became four riverheads. The name of the first is Pishon. It is the one which skirts the whole land of Hav Havilah, where there is gold. And the gold of that land is good. Bedellium and the, o and the onyx stone are there. The name of the second river is Gihon. It is the one which goes around the whole land of Cush. The name of the third is uh, Hidekel. It is the one which goes toward the east of Assyria. The fourth river is the Euphrates. Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to tend and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it you shall surely die. So that's a limit, that's a boundary, that's a, a, a regulation of God, if you like. You can go this far, but no further. You can eat of the tree, of all the trees in the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, no, N-O, that's the limit. God, that's the first limit which Almighty God set for humankind. And we know from the verses following that, of course, there was disobedience and mankind went beyond the limits set by God and well it all went badly wrong and we are all suffering the consequences as a result. The acquisition of knowledge you see that's what we generally speaking as a human race want and that's where so very often science which is not in and of itself it's not inherently bad but science so very often takes people on a journey, ignoring God, away from God, beyond the limits set by God. It's wanting the evolution of mankind into something and somewhere where we are not supposed to be or to go. And that's not good. And things will get worse in this respect because Technologically, we have the ability to advance exponentially now, so very quickly. The, the, the acquisition of knowledge and ideas are accelerating at a very fast rate indeed. And knowledge builds upon knowledge, builds upon knowledge. And, well, the future is, is well, maybe I'll come on to the future in a moment or two's time. But looking at it with natural eyes, no, the future of the world is not good. But, but God, often that expression, but God, comes into play. And for those who accept Almighty God, accept our position before Almighty God, accept the limits which God has set, accept the free gift which God has offered to humankind, the gift of eternal life, the gift of salvation, the gift of forgiveness, the gift of relationship with him. For those people who <clears throat> are in that category, and accept these wonderful phenomena from God to, to repent of themselves, of their sinfulness and disobedience and come to God in humility, accepting what Jesus did on that cross to take the anger and the wrath of God, to be punished by God for our bad behaviour. For such people who accept this have that faith, which is a gift from God, become born again Christians the future is rosy. Life is not a bed of roses, <laughs> but for Christians born again who look to God for everything, absolutely everything, the future is good, the present is good, and the future is good, despite setbacks, despite what is going on, despite the evolution of mankind within the, the, within the, the, the sphere of mankind's own existence, despite that, the future for Christians and the present is very good indeed because we are a forgiven people in a relationship with God. We have God living in us. We have the spirit of God living in us and we are able, therefore, to deal with what's going on around us, ignoring much of it, separating ourselves from much of it and leading lives which should be pleasing to God in how we conduct ourselves on a daily basis. So knowledge, well, knowledge in itself is not bad, but man there, Adam, we didn't read the scriptures, but 
Adam was told not to do a certain thing, not to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Of course, he did and Eve did. It all went wrong. There was disobedience and we're paying the consequences of that. We have been as a human race ever since. There's another example which I'm going to read here in Genesis chapter 6, just a few pages on from Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 6, <clears throat> verse 1 says, Now it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and, and daughters were born to them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were beautiful, and they took wives for themselves of all, of all whom they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man for ever, for he is indeed flesh, yet his days shall be one hundred and twenty years. There were giants on the land in those days, and also afterward when the sons of God came in to the daughters of men, and they bore children to them. Those were the mighty men who were of old, men of renown. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And then the verses following that, of course, go on to deal with the, the flood, the global flood, the worldwide flood, which was the means by which Almighty God dealt with the wickedness of mankind at that particular time because prefacing the wickedness of man and that every intent in the th of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continu continually, prefacing that are the first few verses in chapter 6 which deal with daughters um, were born, the sons of God saw that the daughters of men were beautiful, took wives and there was procreation. It was an unnatural sort of procreation. It was, if you like, maybe I can use the word, it was an artificial sort of procreation, reproduction process. It wasn't what was meant to be. And therefore, Almighty God said, my spirit shall not strive, or maybe we could say abide, with um, men with man forever. Uh, and there, when it says it, there in verse 4 of chapter 6, there were, there were giants on the land, Nephilim or fallen ones or mighty ones, different ways to translate that. It, they may not necessarily have been giants, but they were fallen ones, mighty ones, not what was meant to be. And as this brings me on to uh, talk briefly about a, about a subject about which I know not a lot. There are far more people who are more knowledgeable than I about the whole area of artificial intelligence, robotics, uh, the mechanisation of, or the, the amalgam of humans on the one hand and robotics, electronics, robotics on the other hand. There's a, there is a melding going on, a, a joining going on, an amalgamation going on. More than that, I cannot really speak because I haven't got the knowledge. But this is not how it's meant to be. Humans are the pinnacle of the creation of God. That's a phrase I used at the beginning of this message, which wouldn't be appropriate were we the results of evolution, because evolution and creation are different ends of the spectrum. They are mutually exclusive. So Given that mankind, people, are the pinnacle of God's creation, we are not to be mixed with anything other than man and woman, and that's how the human race continues. That's how the human beings procreate, reproduce, and we are where we are today. Physically, that's how people have continued to populate the earth. 
But when we move into the area in which we already are to an extent, where we have people, a person, people, and the idea is that we have some sort of artificial intelligence, we are linked to computers, or rather computers are linked to us, the idea of having a chip implanted, the, and I'm totally lost on this because I, I'm not a scientist, my knowledge of computers is very small indeed, but the idea of being linked to a system is dangerous, and it's not what God intends at all. There was a time, we just read there in Genesis chapter 6, where the Lord said, saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually and the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth and he was grieved in his heart so the Lord said I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth. Now the Lord will intervene again not in the same way because the flood was a one-off unique experience and the sign of the seven coloured rainbow the seven colored rainbow is God's promise that he will not act in that particular way again but he will act in a way he will intervene in the affairs of mankind many people think in the not too distant future and we as Christians are encouraged to look for the coming of the Lord and the first event is going to be the rapture and I won't discuss that at any length now after that, there will be, the earth will be brought to, to naught, to nothing, not by flood, but, but, but by fire. And there'll be a rolling up of the earth and there'll be a new heaven and a new earth. Now, the rapture is applicable to born again Christians looking to God, watching and praying, waiting, loving the Lord. And at the end of time, the new heaven and the new earth will be for those such people. This will not be for the entire human race, despite what some people believe or what we might hear at a church service or at a funeral service. No, that's not the case. God will intervene again. And the only safe way, absolutely the only safe way in order to be safe with God is to be born by the Spirit of God, is to be born from above, born again, coming into a relationship with God having God by his spirit living in us, which again is, well, that's a non-scientific phenomenon. It's not something which anybody can explain, and I defy anybody to explain that. But we accept that by faith, and we know that by relationship and experience. Yes, I know that the spirit of God lives in me. So the only safe place where we can be safe with God is to have God with us and in us, to look after us and protect us. And then we will be absolutely OK. So evolution, I don't think so. Part three deals with the evolution in the human race, not evolution from anything, but evolution as humans, the desire to evolve into something else. And that's certainly not what God wants. And he will take steps in his own time and I've briefly mentioned the rapture and then the end of the world as we know it. But there will be a future, a new heaven and a new earth. God will take these steps because he will, he will have had enough. He is a God of infinite patience and long suffering. But in the same way in, that in Genesis 6 he acted at a particular time, there will come a time because of our evolutionary philosophies when God will say enough is enough and he will come in power and then he will act.